Okay, we are going to go through an example of a shear and torsion problem. Uh, we'll be working through AS3600, which is concrete structures. Uh, we're going to do this problem here. We've got a beam, 450 deep, 300 wide. F-C, that's the strength of concrete, is 40 megapascals. We're going to have steel at the top and the bottom. Sorry. We'll have three N20s at the top, which is 942 square millimeters. We're going to have same steel at the bottom. We're going to have N10 rings at 125 cc, uh, center to center. And the load on our beam section is 200 kilonewtons of shear, 10, uh, 10 kilonewtons of torsion, 10 kilonewton meters of torsion. So we're going to go through section 8.2 of S3600. Um, so first we're going to work out this torsion, crit the critical torsion, and see if our load is more than a quarter of that, if we need to consider torsion or not. Then we're going to go down and we're going to combine, if it is, we're going to combine the torsion and the shear down here to get an equivalent load. That will give us the equivalent shear load. Then we come down to 8.2.3.1, where we have to work out the shear capacity. There's the equivalent load. There's a shear capacity, and that, of course, VU is the sum of VUC plus VUS plus PV. VUC is the capacity of the concrete, VUS is the capacity of steel, and we're, this is not precast, oh, sorry, pre stressed, so we're ignoring the PV. The VUC is from an equation over here. We'll go through that, then we'll go through the VUS, which is over here, and then finally, we will check that the shear force uh, in, the, in the beam is less than this VU max. Because if it's more than that, you can't do it. You have to increase the size of the beam. Uh, to do this, I recommend you get a pack of Tim Tams handy. If you don't know what these are, Google them. Pause now and Google it. You will not be disappointed. And I don't know, you might want to drink or something. But that's just me. Let's get into it. So this is our beam. As I said, it doesn't really matter how long it is or what the moment is because we're working out the shear force and the shear force capacity. So we need to work out a few um, properties of this first. First, the overall depth of the beam is 450. And I've got a 30 mil cover all around. So one of the dimensions we have to work out is the shear depth, dv. Now, you recall that when we're doing bending that the effective depth, D, is from the top of the beam down to the centroid of those bars there. Okay, so we'll work out that. And that is 450 minus the cover minus the diameter of the stirrups minus half the bars, which is half of 20, which is 10. So that's 450 minus 30 minus 10 minus 10 is 400. By the way, these things here, they're called stirrups, they're called rings, they're called links, they're called shear links. All of those terms mean exactly the same thing. What they are is the bar around there, generally it hooks around the top like that, and it's the shear reinforcement. Okay, however, for shear steel, we actually need DV, and DV is to find somewhere in here if I can find it. Yes, effective shear depth, 8.2.1.9. DV should be taken as the greater of 0.72D or 0.09D, where D is the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the center of the longitudinal, which is what we just worked out there. So DV equals 0 0.9 times 400 or 0. 72 times 450. 0 0.9 times 400 is 360 millimeters. 0 0.72 times 450 is 324 millimeters. And we get to use the greater one of those. So that is dv. And I'll put a clause in there, clause 8.2.1.9. All right, 
There's our first thing. Let's come now to, let's work out at the beginning, have to have a look at our torsion. T critical. T critical is the torsional cracking moment. Sorry, it's cracking, no, it's not critical. That is a moment based on our concrete. So we're gonna work out what that is and then we're gonna compare that to our torsional load. So T, CR, and this is from clause 8.2.1.2. 8.2.1.2 TCR equals 0.33 F dash C times A squared CP over U dash C times the square root of 1 plus phi CP over 0.33 F dash C. All right, let's go find all of those terms. First, our F dash C is our concrete strength, which we know is 40 MPa. Okay, our ACP is the total area enclosed by outside perimeter of the concrete section. So ACP is the total area enclosed by the outside. So it's the area of that, 450 times 300. So let's go with that equals 450 times 300 equals 135,000 square millimeters. All right, UC is defined right there as well the length of the outside perimeter of the concrete cross section. Well, that's the perimeter. So it's 450 plus 450 plus 300 plus 300, which is 900 plus 600, which equals 1500 millimeters. That's the perimeter around that beam there. Okay. Uh, the next one is phi CP. Sorry, that's a, what's that? Whatever that letter is, the CP. The average intensity of effective pre-stressing concrete at the centroid or at the junction of the web and flange when the centroid lies inside the flange. We have no pre-stress. That's zero. That makes that whole term equal zero. So I got that equals zero. Well, that makes it much easier. Okay. Because now our T critical is now 0.33 times the square root of 40 times 135,000 squared over 1500. Now this is going to give us an answer, quite a large answer, which is in Newton millimeters. So let's work that out. 0.33 times 40 square root times 135,000, put that in twice. Multiply that out, divide that by 1500, and that gives us 25358304 Newton meters, which equals, uh, divide that by million to get kilonewton, mil sorry, newton millimeters, divide it by million to get kilonewton meters, and that is 25.3 kilonewton meters and that's T cracking. So that is the torsional force which would crack that beam there. Okay you notice that the steel hasn't really come into it because cracking is all about the concrete strength not the steel strength. Now the next question we have to find out is from here torsional effect shall be considered in regions where T star which is the, lo the torsional load is greater than 0 0.25 times phi times the cracking stress. All right, let's come back to here for a minute and we will go over here, we'll squeeze it in here. Phi equals 0 0.75 and that comes from table 2.2.2. Go to table 2.2.2, there's phi capacity reduction factors phi, shear and torsion. For members where N-class fitments are provided, oh yeah, these are also called fitments. So 
we are using an N10, so that's an N-class bar. Meeting the requirements of clause 8.2.1.7, which we'll come back to, other than for sheer strength limited by web crushing is, is the, 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 about the TU max, so we're not worried about that either. We get to use 0.75. If you're in doubt, you can use the 0.7. All right, we'll pause that for a second, we'll come back.